people here talk about how racist, homophobic we are, how we mistreat women. Can you point me to any Islamic country that would meet the standards that they've set for people like us tonight? Any Islamic country that women are treated equal? No, we're not confusing politics. We're talking about anywhere where Islam congregates to achieve political power on planet Earth. Is there any bastion of freedom and equal rights in the Islamic world? The only place that people point to are places like UAE, Indonesia, um, uh, uh, where people are violently mistreated if they convert to Christianity, where women are mistreated. Listen, I think that there are a lot of great Muslims here in the United States who think as you do, but the fact is that has never actually been rooted in a place of power in the moderate Islamic world. And when I talk about these videos, yeah, well, it's, uh, unfortunately, Islam, unlike Christianity or Buddhism, is an actual political system. It is a pre prescribed system of law. It is not merely religious ideology. It is a prescription on a legal system of government. And that's why you see remarkably anti-freedom, anti-free speech, anti-woman, anti-gay legislation in every Islamic country on the world. I don't care what you have to say about it. I'm looking to their laws. It's Stop also speaking fascist, fascist. You're a great public spokeswoman for Muslims. It's also worth considering, it's also worth considering in the light of what Stephen's saying, there isn't a single world-class university anywhere in the Muslim world. Not one. Why? Because there are structural problems with Islam that prevent this from happening. And, you know, the, you have, you Just have to- Just apply the same standard. You have two, you have two kinds of Muslims in the U.S. You know, some of you aren't going to like this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, because it's true. Um, you have two kinds of Muslims in the U.S. You have nice, assimilated, middle-class Muslims who, let's, let's be honest, aren't the most devout believers. They don't necessarily do namaz, like, namaz. So they, uh, some of them don't pray five times a day. They drink, they smoke, they have sex outside, whatever, you know. Let's just say they're cultural Muslims. But like, I might be a cultural Catholic, perhaps, you might say, right? These are not people who pray five times a day. You have these people, and you, you have them here because you don't border any Muslim countries. You, it, you need to take an intercontinental flight to get here, which limits the sort of people who can arrive. So you get nice middle to upper class Muslims from nice families who are westernized and assimilated, and they're your friends. And you think, gosh, these people are saying such terrible things about Muslims, but I know so many nice Muslims, that can't be true. Well, it's because of where you are in the world, right? So you have those nice mi middle and upper class Muslims, and you have terrorists. That's all you Listen, have here. I don't have a problem what with you. What you don't okay? have here, I've... what you don't have here is what Germany has, 1.4 million Syrian refugees, or should I say migrants, who come in, uh, c commit the most appalling crimes and abuses against women, homosexuals, trans people. You've got nothing to say about that, by the way. Um, you, what you don't have is a massive influx of working class Muslim populations. And it will come, and it is coming, and when it does, you will think very differently about this. One final thing, because I do appreciate taking this question. It'd be two phrases. Listen, my problem is not, of course, there are plenty of great Muslims out there. Not every Muslim is a terrorist. It's important for people to note that. Muhammad was. And I have a problem with that. If you look and read about Muhammad's life, he killed, he called for the deaths of Christians and Jews. I have a problem with that. And you know what? That's okay. Just like atheists have a problem with Christianity. The ultimate troll by the Fusion Network Milo Yiannopoulos, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Am well, I the first person to come back? You are the second, well, maybe the Damn. third or the fourth. I know you want to be first at everything. I'm, I'm, I generally am. In fact, it's better than that. I'm normally way ahead of my time. In fact, I'm normally so early at everything that people think I'm crazy until six months later. I used to have a guy that I wrote comedy with who used to always say, Dave, we're so ahead of the curve, we're behind it. So maybe that's where... Maybe that's me. Maybe, maybe that's, that's where me. you are. That's why I'm so unpopular. I don't know. Yeah. No, we've had a couple, a couple repeat guests, but in a way... You're sort of the most important, not that I have to inflate your ego because I know you like that, but a tremendous amount of stuff has happened since we had you on. So you were on, I think it was the middle of October. Mm -hmm. So we're only, we're, you know, we're five or six months away from that, right? Show's going great, by the way. Thank you. Love it. Um, and a lot has happened in this space that we exist, this cultural mm -hmm. libertarian space. So we got, we got a lot to get to, but let's start with what's happening today. So uh, this morning, uh, there was this terror attack in Brussels at the airport and at a train station over there. Uh, it's still unfolding. So right now, we're taping this. It's Tuesday afternoon here mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. So some stuff obviously will change. Uh, why don't you just give me your, your initial thoughts on what's going on? Well, uh, <laughs> this is sort of what liberalism has welcomed into Europe. Um, you know, uh, this is 
the excuse making that's been made for radical Islam, which has prevented us from fighting this problem by people who lie about the uh, source of these people, the news stations who refuse to accept that you know these these attacks have anything to do with Islam, the people who you know won't even use the word Muslim before it happens. This is preventing us from fixing the problem. You know, this is preventing uh, people from taking adequate adequate security precautions. You know, but looking after themselves. Europe now, you know, welcoming in millions of people from alien cultures, whilst the establishment refuses to accept that these people, um, these people's belief systems are just dramatically incompatible with our own. And, you know, the regular citizenry is being lied to and, and lied about constantly, all the time by the media on this stuff. Um, we have a population that is not able to protect itself, that is not adequately informed about the risks, the dangers of radical Islam. And um, the problem in Europe is that this stuff is now happening everywhere. No one is safe anywhere in Europe. It's happened in Paris, it's happened in London, it's happened in Brussels. No one is safe from this stuff. And what, is the gov what, what, what do our politicians leap to the airways to say? I really want to make it clear it has nothing to do with Islam. Well, it does. Yeah. It does. And as a gay man, you know, I'm terrified by the prospect of mass Muslim immigration into Europe. Um, it's one of the reasons I spend so much time in America now. I don't want to be there anymore. Yeah, so let's back up a little bit. It's interesting that your initial response to that is to talk about our reaction to it rather than the ideology. You know, well, because you mean, nothing surprises you're not, you're me about this. You're not denying this. the ideology. You're obviously no, talking Nothing about. surprises me about this. Why are we surprised that Muslims are blowing things up? That's what they do. Like, I don't care about that. You know, like, it's, it's, it's horrific for the people who are, who are on the receiving end of this terrorist stuff. But is anybody surprised that ISIS blew something up? No. Right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save you a little of Internet hate. You do make the <laughs> distinction between the nominal Muslim person, the average person you don't need, that's a Muslim that doesn't take their religion you don't need to, to seriously. Do, you don't need to do me that favor. No, I don't care too much for that distinction. Um, it is not extremists. It's not radical um, Islamists. It's not the people the security services uh, are worried about that, um, you know, that, that are the problem. It is the silent majority of Muslims who do nothing on, in this situation, have no peace movement, no resistance to their own extreme elements, just like the progressive left in the West. And in 11, is it 11 countries, you and I could be killed for who we are. That's not ISIS. That is mainstream Muslim culture. And we are importing that stuff into Europe by, you know, in, in, in millions. No, I don't make a meaningful distinction between these things because I don't care. I don't see any reason to import these cultures into liberal Western democracies. I see no reason to do it whatsoever. And as uh, Bridget Gabriel once very brilliantly said, in any case, the peaceful majority are irrelevant. It is not the peaceful majority that blow up buildings. It is the extremists. And, and right now in the world, all of this stuff is coming from one culture and one religion, and I don't want it here. So what do we do about that then? What I mean, well, what do you actually do? We can't bomb these people into oblivion. It's, we don't it's have an to. Well, ideology. We the don't radical have... part of this is an ideology, right? Yeah. So how do you beat an evil ideology? We don't have to welcome 1.4 million of them into Germany. We don't have to lie to people about what Islam is um, and what Muslims believe, which the press and, the, and our politicians do all the time. We don't have to intervene in the countries where it's not necessary, where we don't need to. And I was supported the Iraq war, but some of the other things we do in the Middle East are not necessary and just drum up this, um, this Western hatred. Uh, that, that so you don't deny that some of what's going on has something to do with the West, right? No, I'm not saying we're responsible for it. Um, you know, nobody is. Nobody well, I'm not parsing out blame, but you say you you do see some connection, right? Well, you would be an idiot to deny it. Yeah. You know, there are. You know, we have. Well, been, I'm dealing with a lot of idiots here on the left. So. There are a lot of yes, you are dealing with a lot yeah. of idiots on the left. Most of them. <laughs> yeah. It's the only reason I do your show. You're one of the very few liberals with a brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are. I'm lots. starting to not think that's a compliment. A lot of people say that to me, and I'm starting to think maybe that's. Well, a it's not. A, I mean, is it a compliment? I don't know. I mean, it puts you up to average. <laughs> yeah. Is that a compliment? I, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, I mean, look, the, the, the problem is not just radical Islam. The problem is Islam. There are structural problems with this religion that mean it is incompatible with the modern, free, Western liberal democracy we live in. And particularly for you and I, it is, uh, and, and for you and me, and it is also a problem for women. There are very serious problems with Islamic culture, not Islamist, uh, you know, jihadist uh, extremism. And of course, that plays itself out and it played itself out in the streets of Brussels and it plays itself out with far too much regularity. But with Islam, there is a problem and nobody wants to talk about it. And what you tried to do earlier to save me from myself, I don't want it. Um, because now... I respect that. I don't want it because I've got to the point where I'm thinking, look, the West... The West that Islam hates so much is what has given us gay rights. It has provided, the, you know, for women, it's given women the vote. It has ended slavery, which is, you know, not the case everywhere, everywhere in the world. It has given gay people and women all of the rights we now enjoy. There is effective 
blanket equality in, in the West for all of these people. Yeah, and every other minority, too. Exactly. Importing Muslims is going to turn the clock back. And this is what you talk about when you, when you coin, uh, coin and popularize this phrase, regressive left, which came from this show, right? But you don't go far enough. What, what does a regressive left mean? It means it's going to take us backwards into an era of hatred and bigotry. Well, the left seems to want to import Muslims by their millions into all of our countries. That's a regressive consequence, and it's not just terrorism. So what do you think is going on with these people? I know many of these people very well. I've worked with a lot Why? of these people. Why I've do you hang a, out with these I've, losers? I don't, well, I don't anymore. Weird, I don't sickos. Anymore, but this ideology... Judge a man by his friends, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but this ideology, I mean, even this morning on Twitter, as I was scrolling through all the craziness that every time there's a terror attack, all, you know, you get every you know, avenue of craziness. I saw someone, a, a girl, a uh, 20-something-year-old girl in Belgium, she actually tweeted that the, the hashtag Stop Islam, the hashtag itself, she said that's worse than what actually happened. <laughs> I mean, that... T I'm not kidding. I mean, no, I, I know, but you I see this every time. Got thousands. You see this every time. You see this every time. The, the, the left believes that words have power they don't have, right? They, they, they think that you can stop somebody from being homophobic by banning the word gay from the playground. Um, they think that you can end racism by banning the N-word. They think that if you shape language and uh, control culture, that you can stamp out bigotry. Well, that's not how it works. The point of a civilized society, the point of, a, of, of etiquette and a point of negotiating the world uh, you know, around us and... To, and negotiating with other people, is to live with one another despite our prejudices and despite our differences. Mm -hmm. The purpose of a civilized society ought to be to enable everybody to live together in harmony, which is why I hate what the gay lobby does when it bullies and ridicules Christians. Christians aren't going away, you know? Yeah. You're not going to bully Christianity out of existence. You're not going to ridicule Christianity out of existence just because BuzzFeed doesn't like people <laughs> who believe in God. No, right, the purpose also, of we, society we is have... to get everybody to, you know, and we were doing a good job of that. You know, the West is doing a pretty good job of that right up until we started importing Muslims.